Welcome to First Southern. We are so glad that you're here with us and we would like the opportunity to connect with you today. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over to the comments section, drop us a hello or good morning and let us know that you're here. Uh, we've got pastors standing by that want to have conversation with you, uh, talk about today's uh, worship and prayer and message uh, so that we can help you along in your journey with Jesus. Now, if you're new to First Southern, we would love the opportunity to connect with you, get to know you a little bit, answer questions you may have. Uh, so if that's you, here's what I would ask you to do. Swing over to our website. There's actually a link, uh, a, a link uh, to our website in this post. Click on our website, go to the contact us page, uh, fill out that form, and we will have somebody reach out to you this week. And we would love to contact you. Uh, either way, no matter who you are or where you're at, we hope that today's message and worship and prayer continues you along in your journey with Jesus. God bless. And now will you join me as we worship the Lord together? Stand up.
What an amazing time of worship. And now will you join me as we continue in our worship today as we go to the Lord in prayer. Join me in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for how you love us and how you care for us. We thank you that you are almighty and all knowing and all wise. You're perfect in all your ways and unchanging. Lord, we praise you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice that he gave on that cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins. So Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we ask for forgiveness today. Uh, we recognize that we have fallen short, we have disobeyed and we have rebelled against your perfect plan, your will and your commands. And so Lord, we pray that you would forgive us of those sins and in turn help us to be a forgiving people, to go and forgive others uh, with the way that you have forgiven us. And Lord, today as we come to you through worship and prayer and your word, we pray that you would speak to our hearts. Teach us today about how faith affects our lives and how our faith should be focused. So Lord, we thank you again for this time. And we pray that you will bless us by changing us from the inside out, that we would become the men and women of God that you've called us to be, leading every generation in the life-changing hope of Jesus. Amen. I want you to take your Bibles or your apps or whatever you read on today, and I want you to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. Matthew, chapter 14. Now, if you're not familiar with where the book of Matthew is located, here's what I would have you do. If you're in a book, a, a physical Bible, turn to the table of contents, find the New Testament. The, the Bible has two main sections, Old and New Testament. Find the New Testament, and Matthew is the first book of that New Testament. So so find the book of Matthew under the New Testament and turn to chapter 14. Now, if you're in an app, what I would ask you to do is pull down the list of the books of the Bible. Uh, you'll find that Matthew is about two-thirds of the way down that list. So find the book of Matthew, chapter 14, and go ahead and find your way there. Now, when I was in middle school, uh, it was Halloween season, so late October, uh, and my parents had gone out for the evening. I, I can't remember what they were doing or where they went, but I was at home by myself, and I made the decision in my middle school wisdom uh, to pull up a scary movie that was on TV. And so I sat in the middle of our house, it's dark outside, and I'm watching this movie that is playing on the TV and it's scary and there's monsters and the whole nine yards. Uh, and I remember turning the TV off and I was so frightened 
at that time, because of what I had just seen and heard and taken in from this movie, I was so scared that I didn't even have the courage to stand up off of the couch and make my way down the dark hallway to my bedroom so I could go to sleep. So instead, I decided I would just crash on the couch that night. And let me tell you, crash, I did not. I laid on that couch for probably two hours thinking that every creak, uh, every wind gust outside, every appliance that clicked, everything I heard, I thought was a monster or a ghost or something coming out to get me. And I had the hardest time sleeping that night. I just scared myself. My fear took me over. My fear consumed me. It prevented me from doing the one thing that I wanted to do that night, which was go to sleep and forget that I'd ever watched that scary movie. Have you ever been gripped by fear? Have you ever had a moment in your life where fear kind of took over to a certain extent and it manipulated the decisions that you made or didn't make? Uh, that's what we're talking about today. Jesus addresses that in, in a, an event that actually takes place in his life. So I want you to take your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. Now, as you're turning there, let me give you some background. We've covered these things over the last few weeks, but if you haven't been with us, Jesus has been out doing ministry. He has found out that his beloved friend and fr uh, family member and fellow minister, John the Baptist, has been executed by the government. And in Jesus' sorrow, he decides to go find a faraway place. He wants to go off by himself so that he can mourn the loss of his friend. But instead of finding a solitary place, Jesus goes off and a crowd gets to where he's at. And so Jesus, recognizing their needs, he had compassion on them. And he ministered to them, he taught, and then he fed them with five loaves and two fish. So f over 5,000 people, and he fed them with this small amount of food. A huge, huge miracle. Now that has just happened. And that's where we pick up in our passage today in Matthew 14. So look with me, Matthew 14, starting in verse 22. Now I want you to keep in mind what Jesus and the disciples have just experienced. They've just experienced one of the most amazing miracles that Jesus has ever performed. And he's done so in the midst of sorrow, of, of being sad that John the Baptist has been executed. So pick up with me in Matthew 14, starting in verse 22. It says, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. Now, the other side meaning the other side of the Sea of Galilee. While he dismissed the crowds. Verse 23, and after he had, had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart. It is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I absolutely love this passage. This is one of my all-time favorite accounts of Jesus's life and ministry. Uh, and there's so much that we can get out of this passage. So let's dive right in. Let's, let's do a little background here for a moment. 
So he has sent the crowds away. He's just fed over 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. He has sent them away. He has told the disciples, get in a boat and head to the other side of the lake, the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And so they get in a boat and he goes off by himself and prays. And it's late at night. It's getting, you know, pretty late. And Jesus realizes that he needs to get over to the other side. And so he takes off. He, he heads that way. Now we fast forward to where the disciples are at we find that the disciples have been struggling to get the boat across the Sea of Galilee from what the Bible tells us there's this big windstorm uh, that is whipped up and it's pushing against the boat and the waves are hitting the boat and the this passage tells us that around the fourth watch now this is a term that the Romans used back in this day and time and what it basically means the fourth watch was from 3 a.m to 6 a.m. So this is, uh, you know, middle of the night, right before the sun's about to come up. And, and so somewhere around 3 to 6 a.m., they're pushing against these waves and this wind, and they're trying to get to the other side. And they look across, and there's a guy just walking on the Sea of Galilee, just walking on the water. Now, imagine for just a moment, just imagine what these disciples must have felt. Imagine they just came from a day of hard work. They were teaching with, the, with Jesus. They were working with the crowds. They just witnessed the miracle of the feeding of 5,000. They're exhausted. They've had a crazy day. And now they've been in a boat for hours, maybe even upwards of six to, to eight hours that they've been in this boat pushing and rowing against the wind, trying to get to the other side. Um, just for a uh, uh, scale to understand what we're talking about, the Sea of Galilee from one side to the other is just over, uh, just over eight, almost nine miles wide. And they're fighting the wind and the waves to get this boat nine miles across the Sea of Galilee to the other side. And it's, so they're exhausted. And, and one of the verses here says that they, they get really close. They're, they're, they're close to their destination. The actual Greek, which the, the New Testament, this book of Matthew, was written originally in the language of the Greeks. And so in the Greek language, the, the original language that this was written in, the, the word there uh, means about a tenth of a mile. So they were a few tenths of a mile from shore, meaning they could probably see the shore. They're within rowing distance. They can see the finish line. And that's when they see this man walking on the water. Now imagine having a day like that and a night where you've been fighting against the wind and the waves in this boat for hours upon hours. Imagine how they must have felt and imagine what they thought when they saw some guy walking on the sea. I don't know about you, but I would be terrified. I would be shaking in my boots. I would not know what to do. I would probably have the same response that these guys had, that the disciples had. They look over and they go, it's a ghost. They truly believe that they're watching a ghost walking across the sea. And so they're scared. And that's when Jesus stops and guys, guys, don't be afraid. It's me. It's Jesus. And Peter being Peter goes, well, okay, if it's you, Jesus, let me come to you. Let me, let me go out to you on the water. And Jesus goes, okay, come on, man. And Peter gets out of the boat. Now imagine for just a moment, just fathom with me what this must have been like. Peter steps out of the boat, puts his foot on the water, and is able to walk on it. Imagine the exhilaration, imagine the adrenaline rush that Peter must have felt in that moment where he's stepping out of a floating boat onto the Sea of Galilee and he's walking on liquid water. It must have been a very exciting moment for Peter. And so he walks out towards Jesus and 
as he gets closer, remember there's a, a huge windstorm. So the winds are, are shaking the water and there's waves, you know, churning up. And at some point, as Peter walks towards Jesus, he looks down at the water and he realizes where he's at and he realizes what's going on around him and he freaks out he gets scared and at that moment he sees and looks at jesus and cries out and jesus reaches out and in that very moment jesus pulls him up and saves him from drowning in the sea and he turns around and takes peter back to the boat and they get in the boat and the storm the, the windstorm that they're surrounded by stops. And suddenly the disciples go, wow, you are the son of God. And they worship him in that moment. Isn't that amazing? Amazing to think about what they must have seen and felt in that moment. So what is this passage teaching us today? Well, that brings me to my big idea. If you've watched many of my messages, you know that I give a big idea, which is a summary of the main point of that week's message. And today's big idea is this. Face your fears with faith. Face your fears with faith. It's pretty simple. But I think that's the main point of what Jesus is teaching us in this account of his life. Uh, so think about this for just a second. If you go and read the early part of Matthew 14, starting in verse 22, if you read the first section of this passage that we read today, you'll find that Jesus actually commands the disciples to go out in the boat. Jesus knew exactly what was going on. Jesus knew that they were gonna fight the wind and the waves. He knew exactly where they were going. He knew that he was about to walk on the water. He knew exactly what was happening. And he sent them out in that boat to go experience that. You see, Jesus is sovereign over your life. Just like with the disciples, Jesus is sovereign, meaning that Jesus is in full control of everything going on in your life. He is in control we can have faith we can trust in that the disciples believed it afterwards and we can too uh, but when peter comes out of the boat peter realizes that the strength is not in what he can do his strength is in the faith that he has in the power of jesus you see jesus has strength for you Jesus has the strength to power your faith if we'll just keep our eyes on Jesus. If we will simply say, I will fix everything I have on my faith in you, then he, through his strength, will provide for us and help us through whatever it is that we're going through. But the moment that we take our eyes off of the faith that we have in Jesus, that's when things go wrong. But even when things go wrong, what happens the moment Peter cries out to Jesus? What happens when Peter starts sinking into the water because he's lost faith in the power of Jesus? He starts sinking, he cries out to Jesus as he's going down and Jesus reaches down and saves him from the water. You see, even when our faith falters, Jesus will be there to pull us up. Jesus will always save you. Jesus will always take you back when you turn away from your faith or when your faith is not completely focused on him. He will always redeem and reconcile. He will always bring you back and lift you up and bring you back into right relationship with him. He always will. It's a promise. And that brings me to a question. He wants you to come to him, but maybe some of you are watching right now and maybe you've never come to Jesus. Maybe you've never come to faith in Jesus. And if that's you, I wanna to talk to you for just a moment. I wanna speak directly to those who do not believe in Jesus or have never come to believe in Jesus. Jesus loves you. 
He desperately desires for you to know him. You see, he loves you so much that he came to this earth, lived a perfect life because he's the son of God, lived a perfect life, and out of his love, died on a cross to save you and I from our sins. You see, we are all sinners. We have all broken God's commands to us. We are criminals in the eyes of God. But God's love for us is so strong that he sent Jesus to die on that cross. And when Jesus died on that cross, he became the perfect sacrifice for us. He took your place of punishment and my place of punishment. And then on the third day after his death, he rose from the grave in victory over sin and death. And right now, Jesus is in heaven sitting on a throne, ruling over everything. And the Bible tells us that there is a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And Jesus wants to rescue you from your sins. Because he loves you so much, he wants to rescue you. And so if that's you, you've never come to know Jesus as your savior, what I want you to do right now is stop whatever you're doing and I want you to send an email to the email address at the bottom of your screen. I want you to reach out to us or, or reach out to the church this week. We would love to answer any questions that you might have about a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Uh, or we would love to guide you in a decision that you want to make for Jesus. But one way or the other, don't, don't do nothing. D don't act. Do act. Do something. Make a decision. Reach out to us. Let us answer those questions or guide you into that decision because we would love to do that with you. Now, for those who believe in Jesus, it's not about how much faith we have, but who our faith is focused on. Let me say that again, because this is very important to what we're saying today. This is, a, this is a very vital part to what Jesus teaches us here. It's not how much faith we have. It's not the measure of faith that we have inside of us. It's who our faith is on. It's who our faith is focused on. That's what matters. I, I, I want you to look with me again in Matthew 14. And I want you to look with me in verse 31. Peter is sinking, he's cried out to Jesus. In verse 31, it says, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, this is such an interesting passage. Many times through the Gospels, the, the four uh, first books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are the, what are called the Gospels. They're the biographies of Jesus. In the four Gospels, we hear this phrase, O oh, you of little faith. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean, O oh, you of little faith? Well, Peter's faith was not little, meaning that it was small. It, it, Jesus is not commenting on the measure or the level or the amount of Peter's faith. You see, his faith was little because it was placed in the wrong thing. When Jesus says, oh, you of little faith, he's not talking about a measuring method. He's talking about where our faith is placed. Peter got out of that boat. And let me say a side item for just a minute. We kind of hound Peter because he fell into the water and he started to sink and Jesus had to save him. But where are the other 11 disciples in the midst of all this? They're scared to death in the boat. The fact is, is that Peter was the only one that had the faith to get out on the water to begin with. Faith is what Peter had. Peter had a level of, a huge amount of faith. In this moment, he walked on the water. But then when his focus shifted away from Jesus, that's when things went wrong. It wasn't the measure of his faith, it's where his faith, faith was placed. He started looking at the wind and the waves and he got scared because he started thinking, why am I out here? And the other 11 disciples are thinking the same thing. And when his faith was taken off of Jesus, 
that's when things got bad. It was wrongly placed. Let me give you another really great example of why you of little faith does not mean a measurement of our faith. If you go into Matthew 17, just a few chapters after where we're at right now, Jesus teaches about the kingdom of heaven and he talks about, he gives this this parable or this illustration about how little of faith, how a small amount of faith can do great things. He says, if you have faith, even the size of a mustard seed, You can look at this mountain and tell it to move and it will move for you. But guys, the whole point is that a mustard seed is teensy tiny. It's not the measure of faith. I mean, how do you even measure faith? It's where our faith is placed. That's what matters. It's where we focus our faith. And let's be totally frank about our own lives right now for just a moment. We live in a world full of chaos right now. We've got COVID, we've got social unrest, we've got shootings, we've got all of this craziness that's going on. And where's our faith placed in the midst of this crazy world that we live in? Because there are a lot of things right now that we could look around and get scared of. There are a lot of things that as we're walking towards Jesus, we could look at and lose faith in Jesus because we've gotten scared of this over here or that over there. So where's your faith placed during this time? Is your faith in your circumstances? Is your faith in the upcoming elections or in a politician or in the government? Is your faith placed on some relationship that you may have or look to have? Is your faith placed in your financial security? Because all of those things will let you down. If you place your faith on circumstances or government or or, or relationships or whatever it may be, if you place your your faith in anything other than Jesus, you will sink. The fact of the matter is, is our 100% of our faith should be totally focused on Jesus. And that faith is what drives us to fulfill the mission of Jesus. So one last time, look at this passage, Matthew 14. Look with me at verse 33, because I want to look at their response So Jesus, Peter walked on the water, he sank, Jesus pulls him up and saves him. They get to the boat and look at what happens. And those in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly you are the son of God. Isn't that amazing? In the midst of all this craziness, of all the things they've seen, Jesus has calmed the wind and they look at Jesus and their response is to worship him. They declare him to be the son of God. What are you worshiping right now? What is your response to Jesus and the faith that you have in him? Because guys, Jesus calls us to worship him whether things are good or whether things are bad. Whether we have health or sickness, whether we have uh, money and wealth or we're in poverty, whether we are safe or in danger, we're called to worship and praise our Savior. So what is your response right now? Are you worshiping or are you preoccupied with all of the distractions that this culture brings, that this today's world brings into our lives? Are you distracted from the faith that Jesus has for you? And my question is, is if you want to say, yes, my faith is focused and yes, I'm worshiping, okay, what's the proof? Where's your fruit? As we talked about a few weeks ago, are you leading every generation to the life-changing hope of Jesus? I've concluded many messages over the last several weeks with this. Who have you spoken to Jesus about? 
Who have you invited to church or to small group, whether in person or online? Who are you making a difference in? What life are you making a difference in? In the name of Jesus. So that someone can come to know him like you do. Peter got out of the boat. Peter trusted Jesus so much that he laid it all on the line. He risked everything and got out of the boat. What boat are you in? Where's your faith? And what are you worshiping? Take the next week and ask yourself these questions. Take a careful look. Ask the Holy Spirit to look inside you and to reveal to you where you can grow, how your faith can grow in him. We're all called to do it. Will you join me in prayer? Almighty God, thank you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the faith that you provide. Thank you that you will save us anytime that we cry out to you. Lord, help us to be singularly focused on you and you alone. Help us to have that kind of faith. The faith that Peter had to step out of the boat and act on the calling of Jesus. Help us to be the men and women of Christ that you've called us to be. We pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. We wanna thank you for joining us here at First Southern today. We hope that through the worship and prayer and the word today, that you have continued down that, lot, that path, that journey that Jesus has for you. Uh, so we hope that you've been blessed. If you've got questions or you're in need of assistance or you'd like to know more about our church or know more about a life-changing relationship with Jesus, please reach out to us this week. We would love to connect with you and help in any way that we can. Now, let me give you some updates on some things that are going on. First off, we are still continuing in our Serve Scottsdale initiative. We're making a huge difference in our community uh, and in the health of churches throughout our state. And so if you would like to donate uh, non-perishable food items, uh, hygiene items, or cleaning items. Uh, you can always drop them off here at the church Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, or if you would like to donate money, please, uh, you can go to our online giving portal. Just make sure and click Serve Scottsdale when that uh, point in the process comes up. Or if you want to send us something, uh, please just make sure that on your check, you write in the memo line, Serve Scottsdale, so that we know that that's where you want your donation to go. Uh, so we're continuing with that. Also, if you would like to know more about First Southern and what we believe and why we do things the way we do them, we are going to have what we call our next steps class. And so if you're interested in getting to know us better and, and understanding who we are, well, I would encourage you to sign up for this next steps class. So what I would ask you to do is send us an email, go on to our website and go to the contact us page, reach out to us and let us know that you'd be interested uh, in getting signed up for that next steps class. Uh, we have several options for that. So just reach out to us and we'll let you know how to get connected with that. By the way, that class is going to be offered on Sunday, September 27th at 9.30 a.m. So that's the last Sunday of this month at 9.30. Uh, we'll probably be holding that in the Welcome Center, and we do ask that you sign up for that class so that we know how many are coming. Um, lastly, please stay connected. We wanna make sure that we are communicating, and connecting with you. Uh, so if you've got questions, if you need something, if you would like to get connected to one of our online small groups, uh, please let us know and we would love to help you out. So stay connected, stay in your faith and have a blessed week. <music>